They came, they flew, they wildly exceeded expectations. More than 40 cadets and midshipmen from the U.S. Military Academy, the U.S. Naval Academy, and the U.S. Air Force Academy helped expand the capabilities of swarms of highly autonomous unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs, in April 2017 in the Service Academy's Swarm Challenge. In the skies over Camp Roberts, an Army National Guard post north of Paso Robles, California, each academy demonstrated the innovative offensive and defensive tactics they had developed over the school year. The three-day experiment concluded with an exciting aerial battle in which the Naval Academy took home the win, a trophy, and bragging rights over its rival academies. The service academies absolutely achieved their goal this particular event for the purposes of being able to demonstrate 25 versus 25 mixed swarms of fixed wing and quad rotor aircraft conducting swarm on swarm battles over the skies of Camp Roberts. We're able to see the cadets and midshipmen come up with new swarm tactics and deploy them and demonstrate them in live fly experiments and that was a phenomenal success. That success was the result of the teams and DARPA alike overcoming numerous obstacles in the eight months leading to the final live fly competition. DARPA had to develop, build, and test custom communications networks and real-time data visualization systems designed to track dozens of UAVs simultaneously. In addition to creating viable tactics, the students had to manage their own packed schedules, diverse areas of study, and the complex technology, logistics, and organization of the competition itself. One of the most exciting outcomes of the Service Academy Swarm Challenge is the opening of the eyes and the imagination, not only of the cadets and midshipmen, not only of the researchers that helped create this technology, but also of those of the warfighters and the operators who were able to witness and see the cadets and midshipmen engage in swarm versus swarm battle in live flight and understand both what they're able to do and what they're not yet able to do. We'll often do a challenge instead of a normal program when we we know there's uh, innovation to be had, but we're not quite sure what the answer is, and so we want to reach a broader community and uh, let the ideas bubble up. The vision for the Swarm Challenge was really, let's go to the service academies, where we have young officers in training and, and see what their ideas are in terms of swarm tactics, how they would use swarms to fight future wars. The service academies tested their tactics in a modified version of Capture the Flag. Two teams at a time played inside the battle cube, a cubic airspace 500 meters on a side, 78 meters above the ground. Each team was given 20 fixed-wing UAVs and 20 quadrotor UAVs and, under the rules of play, could field a heterogeneous fleet of up to 25 UAVs for each of two 30-minute battle rounds. Each team had to protect its flag, a large inflatable ground target, while trying to score the most points before time ran out. Teams had three ways to score points air-to-air -air tags that used a simulated virtual weapon to hit an opponent's UAV in flight, air-to-ground tags earned by physically landing a UAV on the opponent's flag, and accomplishments in swarm logistics by launching as many UAVs as quickly as possible and keeping them aloft as long as possible. The three matches saw successively higher scores and more complex gameplay as the teams gained and learned from their experience. That sounds like base attack. But we are on reverse grade shooter, so hopefully we can shoot it down. Shoot first. it down. In the opening match, Air Force defeated Army 58 to 30 in a 20 on 20 battle. Army took an early lead, but Air Force's ability to quickly amass a larger swarm proved to be the decisive factor. When I heard that DARPA was doing a challenge and to include the service academies, I thought, well, what better way to find out what innovative approaches they might take to tackle this problem set to deal with the same problem I'm dealing with when I think about what's going on downrange, protecting our soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines in the field. The technology is adapting very fast. This challenge will, will be a shot in the arm to kind of push us in the right direction. This classic matchup saw Navy defeat Army 70 to 37 in a 20 on 25 battle. This match was all about the fixed wing aircraft with only one successful air to air tag by a quad rotor. What DARPA has done here is really exciting. Essentially what they've done is they've leveraged the innovation that comes from uh, young cadets who are in their senior year, uh, many of them studying computer science, uh, electrical engineering, and other disciplines. Uh, they've leveraged what industry has done, they've leveraged what other government organizations have done, such as DARPA and the Naval Postgraduate School, and brought that together and have put on a, a really remarkable demonstration. Five, six is auto and armed. 
Navy defeated Air Force 86-81 to in a hard-fought championship match in which the lead changed four times before the clock ran out. Both teams launched everything they had available, fielding the most aircraft of all the matches with 60 UAVs aloft at a time, 25 on 25 in play while each team launched and held five additional craft in reserve. Air Force's swarm was made up of 18 fixed wings and 12 quadrotors, while Navy's swarm was 20 fixed wings and 10 quadrotors. It's very interesting the Marine Corps because for us this is the next evolution of maneuver warfare. What you have is the ability to give commands to a decentralized group of autonomous vehicles to then execute tasks that would otherwise be accomplished by Marines, leaving the Marines free to do other tasks, either amplifying our capacity or limiting risk in some cases. Each team developed multiple tactics as well as an overarching strategy for implementing them during matches. DARPA is currently evaluating this preliminary research for potential applicability to future military missions. The trend in military operations is, is increasing the area of human-machine cooperation. So whether they're satellites or whether they're UAVs or unmanned undersea vehicles or unmanned ground vehicles, those are starting to get into the military. But what the swarm challenge um, refocuses them on is the fact in the future, 10 or 15 years down the line, when these become go from a challenge into a real military capability, a real system, they'll have the opportunity in the future to employ you know, hundreds or thousands of unmanned entities like a swarm in the conduct of a military mission. And after all, the job of DARPA in helping the military and payoff is to make sure that, our, that every fight we go into is an unfair fight in our favor. And if that means that these future midshipmen and cadets are officers that can utilize unmanned systems in a swarm configuration to effectively prosecute a military mission, then that's absolutely what we, want them, what we want them to get out of it. I think one of the incredible values of coming out to the field and conducting these types of life fly experiments, specifically for the Service Academy students, is that they get that hands-on experience, that ability to integrate what they've learned in the classroom, what they've been taught and told during their training, and then apply that out here amidst other experts, amidst other mentors and their peers, and really solidify their understanding of the capabilities that are at hand. I think there's a bright future for these young military leaders in the sense that they are now having experienced the cutting edge of technology can shape how that technology can be used in the future, whether through doctrinal development, whether through experimentation of their own, or whether it's just understanding how their soldiers, sailors, Marines, and airmen are gonna be able to use these technologies in the future.